When bacteria colonize implants, this can lead to dreaded and serious clinical complications that are very difficult to treat and involve added stress and therefore additional risks for patients. What's interesting about our new surface coating is that it has the same structure as a cicada wing. This nanostructured surface consists of tiny nanopillars and in the case of the cicada wing, just like with our coating, this surface can kill bacteria. Professor Ludwig and Professor Köller are researching a new coating for implants. Nature presented a model with the surface of a cicada wing, which Köller and his colleague Dr. Christina Zengstock are testing for medical technology. What happens to bacteria on a nanostructured titanium surface? For the very tiny and micrometer-sized bacterium, this surface is just like a bed of nails. The bacteria sink into the sharp points of the bed of nails, which creates tensions in the bacterial cell wall, so that the cell wall finally bursts, subsequently causing the bacteria to die off. We have tested this with two prototypes of gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. We used Escherichia coli for the gram-negative bacteria, and Staphylococcus aureus for the gram-positive bacteria. Staphylococcus aureus in particular often causes hospital-acquired infections. At this point, many bacterial strains are resistant to antibiotics. Infections put patients in great danger. This is why new ways to combat them need to be found. The surface affects gram-negative bacteria because gram-negative bacteria only have a cell wall composed of one single layer. This single layer cell wall is relatively stable. Unlike gram-positive bacteria which have a cell wall with up to 40 layers. This is why these gram-positive bacteria are mechanically more stable. Another reason is that gram-negative bacteria are generally rod-shaped bacteria and therefore have a larger contact area on our surface. The gram-positive cocci are more or less round and have a smaller contact area, which is why these titanium nanopillars essentially have no or nearly no effect on them. Professor Ludwig and his colleagues produced the coating at the Institute for Materials at the Ruhr University Bochum in Germany. Ludwig explains the procedure. The manufacturing process is based on the magnetron sputtering principle. This is a thin film process where you can essentially deposit any materials as layers on surfaces. In this case, however, the process is modified so that large nanostructures are generated on the surfaces in a large scale. To do this, the source is arranged in very small angles to the coated surface and a nanopillar cover develops on the surface. This glancing angle sputtering is essentially a universal process. You can deposit any materials that can be manipulated in a vacuum as nanostructured layers and on any surfaces, which in turn also need to have vacuum capability. Materials research can get inspiration from nature by realizing that there are certain interesting effects in nature. And then you analyze whether this exists in connection with the surface structure and its chemical properties. And then you can try with our coating experiments, for example, to reproduce such structures and compare whether this causes similar effects that can subsequently be technically utilized or also be used in medical technology. Examples like this show that researchers in medical technology do not necessarily always need to reinvent the wheel. Thanks to bionics, they only need to technically copy nature's example to ultimately benefit from it. This process is adjustable in that you can achieve different layer architectures in terms of morphology, but also in terms of chemical composition. We are able to modify it laterally and as it relates to growth direction. We will vary the nanopillar height and the distance between the pillars to improve the effect we have achieved so far. 
Of course, we also want to affect the gram-positive bacteria that are not being affected yet. To do this, we will introduce antimicrobial metals to the titanium pillars, for instance copper, silver or even zinc oxides.